Welcome to Mount St. Helens. Located along the Cascade Range, this mountain is a testament to nature's power and beauty. Thousands of years of plate tectonics have made Mount St. Helens the youngest and the most active volcano in the Pacific Northwest. It is situated on a dynamic landscape that is constantly being sculpted by nature. And this place is teeming with life. The surrounding Gifford Pencho National Forest is home to numerous species of flora and fauna. Flowers decorate the fields and attract insects. Cool, freshwater lakes near the mountain hold an abundance of aquatic life. But this mountain has not always been as hospitable. 35 years ago, Mount St. Helens had a beautiful cone-shaped peak. But underneath the ground, powerful forces were at work priming the volcano for its next eruption. Pressure was building up inside of this resting giant as it inched closer and closer to catastrophe. And on May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens finally awoke from its slumber. A magnitude 5.1 earthquake triggered a massive collapse of the northern face of the mountain resulting in one of the largest landslides in recorded history. The eruption began because molten rock had risen up into the volcano, turned, pushed the north face out sideways five feet a day until the north face of the volcano became so unstable it collapsed in a massive landslide. The bulk of that landslide hit this ridge, bounced off of it, traveled 14 miles down the Tootle River Valley, filling the valley with gigantic chunks of Mount St. Helens. Uh, called hummocks. The landslide deposit averages 150 feet deep up to 640 feet deep. When the ash settled, the destruction was clear. In just a few moments, the landscape had been transformed into a barren wasteland. Towering conifer trees were flattened. Hundreds of square kilometers of the surrounding region was completely devastated and blanketed by hot debris from the blast. Millions of big animals, fish, and birds immediately perished. The cone-shaped peak of the mountain was replaced by a horseshoe-shaped crater. Spirit Lake, which was once a popular tourist destination, became decimated. This landslide that fell off Mount St. Helens Part of it surged all the way through Spirit Lake, shoved the water up the hillsides on the opposite end of the lake. The water sloshed about 800 feet up the hillsides, grabbed the trees, the trees in the water sloshed back down. And so within an instant, the surface area of Spirit Lake doubled and the depth of the lake halved. And then all afternoon, these very, very hot avalanches of pumice and ash called pyroclastic flows flowed down into Spirit Lake and greatly heated the water. So before the mountain erupted, Spirit Lake, uh, they took a temperature, it was 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Immediately after the eruption, it was 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Before the eruption, you could see 27 feet down into the water. It was crystal clear. After the eruption, you could only see a couple of inches. It seemed like nothing near the blast zone survived. However, small critters like ants, gophers, frogs, and salamanders had burrowed deep into the ground, protected from the eruption. Not all life was lost. The process of reincarnation had begun. The elimination of wildlife created a new niche for these creatures and gave them an opportunity to multiply in a new habitat. Even in regions devastated by the eruption, organisms still found ways to establish a footing. The prairie lupin, for example, was one of the first plants to colonize the scorched, 
pumice-filled valleys. Their symbiotic relationship with bacteria allows them access to nitrogen even in a soil lacking nutrients. Not only did they spread quickly, they also fertilized the soil for other plant species. The increase in plant life attracted pollinators and herbivores from other areas, replenishing the devastated regions with wildlife. Trees emerge from the ashes of dead flora. This resulted in the birth of the next generation of forests, which provided a new habitat for birds. A new explosion of life occurred only a few years after the deadly eruption. Even Spirit Lake, which received the full impact of the blast in 1980, is now filled with fish like the rainbow trout, which was reintroduced at least 15 years ago. This event created a tremendous amount of habitat between, between all the dips and depressions on the hummocks, uh, ponds formed, and it turns out 150 new lakes and ponds formed on the landslide deposit. That's a five-fold increase in aquatic habitat, and the result of that 35 years later, the landslide is the most biologically diverse landscape in the National Volcanic Monument. Today, life at Mount St. Helens has made a phenomenal comeback. Animals, birds, and insects inhabit a place that supports their existence. But the fate of this new ecosystem will be determined by the forces underneath the ground. Although it sleeps today, it's only a matter of time until Mount St. Helens erupts again, repeating the cycle of destruction and life.